Welcome to the award-winning Saints Happy Hour podcast. Seriously, this podcast has won awards. American standards are dropping every day. The show features Ralph, the best host in the world, who can barely pronounce his own name, much less anyone else's. Marcus Colson, Colston, I mean, uh, Marcus Calloway. Dave is that dude who loves taking bathroom breaks. He's mad about almost anything, so make sure to lower your volume when he speaks. Put that freaking clown meme back up that I made. Jesus Christ. Andrew has sources, watches tapes, and knows football. He rarely shows up on time and wants to commit crimes to help the Saints win. Sean Payton would have done illegal things. Don't tell me I'm wrong, because you know it's true. Oh, and there's also Kevin, who is great at doing mock drafts, but struggles to actually watch Saints games or have a functioning relationship. Budrich wants to know how uh, the doctor's doing. That that ended. Anyway, grab a drink, sit back, and enjoy the insanity. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Saints Happy Hour podcast. Kevin, when you sh- when you when you shake your head back and forth, you confuse you just threw me completely off kilter. Uh by shaking your head, like now I'm thinking there's audio problems, there's no, video problems. No, no, <laughs> it's just, it's the fact that I have to mute the audio on my computer every time you do your intro, <laughs> because I don't need, I don't need these bad boys getting right, blown out. Uh, I am <laughs> over 40. Once you are over 40, you gotta, everything you gotta, is a risk. That's right. That's including right. Including hearing your intro. So, Kevin threw me off for a second, but welcome to Saints Happy Hour Podcast. Go to saintshappyhour.com, sign up, become a patron. Kevin, I want to just thank uh, Carter, John, Wendell, Joe, Andrew, and Jason. They all signed up in the past week to become a patron and support Saints Happy Hour. They're going to get all the podcasts we do for free. They're going to get access to the Discord. They're going to get access to commercial-free episodes. So join us. Saints season is here. Make your Saints season more fun. Support the award-winning podcast. It's almost here. It's uh, it's true. It's almost here. It's almost here. So, oh, speaking of, when are we going to do our? Fa- when, are we doing fantasy football this we, year? We're going to do it. I got to. I got to get organized. I got. I got a lot of personal issues. <laughs> I got to get the mock drafts organized. We got. It's. It's coming up because because we usually do it Labor Day weekend, and that's fast approaching. So we got to get that. Yeah, done. we will. Okay, we will. All right, we will. So. Today, I want we. I thought of this. I didn't think of this idea. I'm just stealing this idea. And this, but it's at fine. least we're admitting it. We're, we're admitting admit, it. So that makes it okay. I admit it. I'm stealing it and I'm making it Saint centric. We're honest Me, thieves. Yeah, we're honest thieves. Mina Kynes, Bill Barnwell, and uh, Dominic Foxworth, uh, they all did a podcast and they did, they each did three hot takes, NFL hot takes, and they went on each other's podcast and they argued about them. And I was like, that's a great idea. We should do that for the Saints, where me and Kevin come on and we do a mild take and a spicy take for the 2023 Saints season. And we argue about them and we decide if they're realistic, how mild are they, how spicy are they. So we're going to each do a take, mild and spicy, and we're going to argue about them, discuss them, see if they're legitimate or how how hot take are they. So. Uh, Kevin, you go first. What's your mild take for the Saints 2023 season? Okay, so when you said we were only doing a mild and a spicy, I thought, man, if we were really doing the three, (laughs) this one might be the medium. uh, You know, this might be the hot instead of the mild. So, Mm -hmm. but of the two, I believe this is the more mild take. Derek Carr is going to throw for 5,000 yards pretty and, spicy. 30, and 30 touchdowns. That's pretty spicy. The, he has never thrown for, for 5,000 yards or 30 touchdowns. Or Actually, no, I apologize. He's thrown for 30 touchdowns once. That was in 2015. And he threw for less than 4,000 yards that year. That's, a, that's pretty... I mean... He's I thrown wanna... for f- the closest he's gotten to 5,000 yards was two years ago. He threw for 4,800 yards and got 23 touchdowns then. I mean, I'm saying he's putting both of those things together in one pretty season. Spicy. That's pretty spicy. With the Saints. I want to bang on you, but with that's all pretty... the problems and the question marks on the Saints O line. That's right. That's pretty spicy because to. 
the Saints off to 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 get five thousand yards and thirty touchdowns. The Saints offense would have to be Blinking. pretty pretty good and pretty efficient. I could see a scenario where the defense suddenly turned bad and cars having a lot of like chase yards and that could inflate it a little bit. So that would worry me a little bit, but that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty spicy because basically. Right. So I added the, I initially told you, I'm just going to do 5,000 yards. The 30 touchdowns is the extra spice that's because extra. yeah, you're right. He could. The Saints could be in a situation where they're down by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, and Derek Carr's got to be slinging it, trying to play catch up, and they can get a ton of yards. They can get the That's garbage right. yards and all that kind of stuff. But Derek Carr throwing for 30 touchdowns means the offense is working. He, he ain't going to get that. They, I don't see him getting a ton of garbage touchdowns if they're constantly chasing. Yards, yes, but the touchdown yeah. thing is, is where it'll separate. I mean, and listen, as Saints fans, we're kind of not, 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 not like immune to it, but like Drew Brees, threw, he did 5,000 yards, what, five times? I'll check so, that. So Saints fans, we are like, oh, 5,000 yards. Just to remind you, even though the NFL has gone to 17 games, Kevin, Derek Carr, if he wants to throw for 5,000 yards, he's got to average 294 passing yards a week. That's his average. So if you have a week where he throws for 220, he's got to throw the next week for 375 to get back on schedule for 5,000 yards. Like 5,000 yards, even in the 17-game schedule, is still a daunting task. Drew Brees threw for 5,000 yards five times. Five times. He hit... His next two highest were 49-52. Wow. And 48-70. Wow. So he nearly threw. So he threw for 5,000 yards five wow. times. Nearly got there seven times. Wow. So it's it, it's a it's a ha- it's a high it's a high bar is what I'm saying. And even and I know people probably said, oh, it's 17 games, but it's still it's still really difficult. So that is, a, I mean, for a mild take, that's Let's pretty see, spicy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm trying to look up all the players who have done it. I mean, it it it's what Marino, Breeze, Brady, Stafford, Manning, Roethlisberger, Mahomes. Jameis and Justin Herbert. So nine. So nine guys. Nine guys. And that in the was three of the league. The long for the longest time, the five thousand yard barrier was sort of the unreachable star of NFL records. Like right. Marino, it was, it was Dan Marino. It for, was Dan forever. It was Dan Marino for twenty four years, yeah. and then Drew Brees did it. Yeah, and then it was a couple more years, and then suddenly, you know, Breeze kept yeah, racking him up, and then everything, and then the Tom Brady and the league changed the passing one. league. Now it's 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 easier yeah. to do. So, so well, but, easier in it, quotation marks. I mean, more, it, teams throw I mean, the Justin, ball more. Justin so. Herbert, Justin Herbert, Mahomes, and Brady each have one with the 17 game season. Brady got one at 16, and Mahomes got one at 16. Well, the thing that makes it so hard is. Derek Carr could be on schedule for 5,000 yards at Halloween, right? And you could be like, this is my, my take. I told you guys, if he's on track for 5,000 yards, he's on track for 30 touchdowns. And then the Saints get to November, and they could win three games in a row where they run the ball. Maybe the offense kind of struggles a little bit. And Derek Carr, three straight weeks, throws for under 220. And you can kiss 5,000 yards goodbye because then he's got to cu- throw in a couple 400-yard games just to get back on track. So it's still a very difficult one to reach. So that's, that's, that's a strong mile take. But my mile take, Kevin, sort of ties into yours. And I said my mile take, Chris Olave is going to be second team all pro. Receiver. Now everybody's high on Olave. Yeah. Field Yates says, "Hell, oh, Olave is going to be a top ten receiver." Saints fans, even the media say he's looked great. He's the Saints' best player. He's going to be a top fifteen, top ten receiver. But when I tell you 
he's going to be second team all pro. When you look at the receivers who have been all pro, you're talking Justin Jefferson, 1,800 yards. Tariq Hill, 1,600 yards. Uh, A.J. Brown, 1,400 yards. You're talking for Olave to be second team all pro. You're talking 90 plus catches and minimum 1,400 yards. If you want to be second team all pro, because you're talking when you're talking second team all pro, Kevin, you're talking top two or three receivers in the NFL. You're talking better, better stats than Jamar Chase, equal to Justin Jefferson, Tariq Hill, AJ Brown, anyone digs from Buffalo, anyone you want to name. So that is my mild take. I just think Alave is going to be freaking out of this world incredible this year for the Saints. And I don't uh, think I don't reason, think it's, I mean it's that's reasonable to expect. I, I mean, mean the sec it's the second team all pro that makes it the the uh it, that elevates it to a hot take or a well, mild I mean, I, take I should say. I think I I think the thing is the reason why I did the second team all pro is just to give people like an, a, a benchmark of where I think he'll be statistically. Right. Right. So, you know, and when, when you're talking, oh, he had 1,000 yards, he's going to be really good. Like a top 10-ish receiver, he catches 80 balls, 1,250 yards, 10 touchdowns. That's really freaking good, and that'll get, get him to the Pro Bowl, and he'll be known as an elite receiver. But to, but to be all pro, you right. got to go a step up. Well, to be all pro, so to be all pro, you have to be one of the six best players at your position. That's right. Well, to, I mean, wide receiver wise. Well, second team, you'd have to be top four, right? No, second team, you got to be top six. They do. Oh, they do three receivers for all pro. Yeah. Okay. So I just checked. You had it's. So they've got. So three and three. It's three and three, right? So, you'd so have to be they top pick six. Yeah, it's weird because they list. Uh, the twenty twenty two team. They list four running backs. Ah, you know what? <laughs> it's not. It's not a mandatory. It's not mandatory. Okay. So that they pick six, because if you go back a couple of years to 2020, they have four wide receivers listed as all pro, uh, second team all pro, mm -hmm. and then the it it, it just depends. It just so, depends. Great. But top but, basically, let's say top six. That's a good point. He's going to be. Yeah. I'm saying. He six receiver at the end of the year yeah you know and, and i believe i believe that the top it's more likely that he's top six if michael thomas isn't healthy like i don't think i think michael thomas being healthy will help the saints be a better offense and will kind of maybe depress his numbers but without michael thomas i think it's more likely that Olave. Is second team all pro because that's kind of I'm, I'm kind of betting like Michael Thomas. I'm not a I'm not a believer that he's going to be healthy for more than like eight to ten games, um, if that. So that's my mild take. Isn't it's pretty spicy? I'll say Olave second team all pro. So now we get to the now we're getting to the the what, what, when like I don't know what you call it like the nuclear ghost pepper uh, Carolina Reaper level hot take, Kevin. So what is your Hottest 2023 Saints take. All right. So. I really debated this one because I had one of two people I was going to name. And then I well, just. What? What were you going to say? I was going to say, well, go with go. Tell us what you what you thought about doing before. And then what? Tell us what you actually chose. Well, so. My thought immediately went to comeback player of the year. Mm -hmm. I had two options. Yeah. It was either going to be, I was either going to say Michael Thomas. Yeah. Or the guy I went with. Now, Michael Thomas has just been dealing with, in, you Injuries. know, has been dealing with injury, missed time and all that kind of stuff. So I'm looking at the description for the NFL Comeback Player of the Year Award. And I didn't know that there were multiple awards of this given out. I thought yeah. it was just the one. 
But given to an NFL player who has shown, quote, perseverance and overcoming adversity in the form of not being in the NFL the previous year, a severe injury, or simply poor performance. Michael Thomas certainly qualifies for that. Yes, he does. And believe me, it would be an absolutely batshit insane nuclear take to say that Michael Thomas, who hasn't played a full season of football Since in the last few years, is going to win comeback player of the year. That's right. However, Michael Thomas hasn't been, has been with the Saints. That's right. He played last year. He's, he's played. Three games he played. I went... <laughs> Man, don't remind me of that. I went with a guy who hasn't played for the Saints since 2014. Oh, here we go. Oh, I wow. went with a guy who was on pace to being one of the five greatest tight ends of all time. And then basically Adam walked Trotman. away from it <laughs> be- because his, either him or his agent thought he deserved wide receiver money. I went with a guy who bounced around teams for the last several years, barely showed flashes of what he was. The last time he showed a flash of who he was, he was playing against the Saints in the Superdome and caught an amazing touchdown pass at the end of a game. And walked to the locker room. And walked to the locker room. I am talking about a man who, when he re-signed, it was all love, all feel That's good, right. all the time on social media. He caught a first down pass in it's a preseason game and got the dome on its feet. Euphoric. I'm picking a man. I'm naming a man who just had a weird medical episode. Medical episode arrest. On the road. But he's good. And, he's back and is, practicing. And so is now coming back from that on top of everything else. I am talking about Jimmy Graham is comeback going to win year. a comeback player of the year award. I've said here's, it. Here's the, here's the thing with this. This is why this take is super spicy. Is because... The Saints currently, Kevin, at tight end, have fantasy darling and Saints fan darling, Jawan Johnson, Mm -hmm. breakout candidate, breakout of the year candidate. They have Foster Moreau, another comeback player of the year candidate because he's defeated defeated cancer, right? Right. They have him. They have your UDFA son, Lucas Kroll. So my point with this take is why I, I think still it's, Taysom Hill technically qualifies. And Taysom Hill I technically, am. right? Taysom, funny thing about Taysom Hill, the Saints are paying him $10 million in cash this year. He's never once played 50% of offensive snaps in a game for the Saints in 2022. Good money if you can get it, Taysom. But here's my, here's my concern with this hot take. For Jimmy Graham to be comeback player of the year, I think the Saints got to have, they might have to have the injury apocalypse at tight end. He'd have to become the guy so that, like, Juwan Johnson would have to get injured. Foster Moreau would have to get injured. And then the Saints are like, oh, we got to go. We got to play Jimmy Graham all the time. And he plays really well and catches 45 or above balls. I don't, I don't know if Jimmy Graham, Kevin, can be the comeback player of the year if he does the role the Saints have envisioned for him of – Red zone beast catch 15 to 20 passes and five touchdowns. Like that would be great. And we would love that as Saints fans. I don't know that that gets you to come back player of the year. You t- let me tell you this. So it, you're first of all, he has to make the team. Yes. He has to. It's not, it's still not a guarantee. That's right. Because we, we really don't know what the, what the arrest medical episode thing is going to turn out to be. Um, you know, is it, 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 it maybe he was doing maybe he was doing something. Uh, I think most of us tend to lean that that. That uh, that was not the case, that he either was having a medical episode or that something was done to him to put him in that mm-hmm. state. Uh, I mean, the LAPD, 
bullshitting? No. Um, no. <laughs> but so, so even then, he still has to make the team. You're going to have Juwan Johnson, Taysom, and Foster Moreau who are going to be there ahead of him. Are they going to put a fourth tight end on the roster? He's going to have to beat out. He's going to beat out Lucas Kroll. Like Lucas yeah. Kroll is not yeah. playing well Lucas enough. So Kroll it's going to be. Practice is squad. he? Is he playing well enough? I, I mean, shit. Maybe this medical episode could that actually be something serious where he has to maybe go on IR or something? Yeah. We don't know. Sure we don't know. IR, so yeah. he has to make the team. Now, you're talking about, all oh, these other guys got to be injured, Juwan Johnson's got to be injured, all this other kind of stuff. But you caught your, but you see, you gave the answer in your rebuttal. Oh, really? <laughs> Here we go. If he is the red zone guy, let Juwan Johnson, let Foster Moreau catch him from 20 to 20, and let Jimmy Graham take you the final furlong. <laughs> Jimmy Graham can get you 30 catches, seven touchdowns, and three dunks. That, that, that'll get you put, that'll get him come back. And that year. will, Lock it I'm in. telling you, that'll I get him. think that could get him come back think, player of the year. I, th I think it could, especially, I think it could. especially if the, especially if the Saints win the division. That's right. If they look, you know, if they look like if the offense looks, re, you know, retooled, Reborn. you get you get enough. Listen, comeback player of the year. A lot of times it's vibes, man. It's, it's vibes. a vibes award. Yeah. Yeah. And that's Geno the thing. Smith won it last year. It could be it could be a case of the Saints. A game gets flexed or the Thursday night game against Jacksonville or the Monday night game against Carolina. Jimmy Graham hops in the time machine and has six catches for 97 yards and a and, and the game winning touchdown and a dunk right and then that's like for for your the, the vibes like that when you do it on monday night you do it on thursday night you do it on sunday night like it just carries more weight with right. these awards it just does right you know, so I think that's a great point. Can I sign right now? 30 catches, seven touchdowns, and three dunks. Can I sign up for that right now? Regardless of if he wins just, the comeback player I'm of the year? I'm just putting that out. I like, like this. Here's the funny thing. 30 catches, that's, that's less than two a game. That's right. That's less than two a game. I honestly think if he's on the team and he's playing, he, he would get enough targets to warrant two catches a game. Yeah. Because he would easily he would get enough targets to warrant two catches a game. Because they'll be in the they'll be in the red zone at least three times a game, even if they're awful, right? So I that's a super spicy take. But I okay. think but I think my hot take, my my Carolina Reaper hot take, uh, is even more spicy than yours. Okay. The Saints only had one interception by a corner last year, Mal. Marshawn Lattimore uh, on week, week 16, right? Or week 17, I guess, against Philadelphia. They only created 14 turnovers the entire year. The Saints are going to lead the NFL in turnovers created. And that would mean the Dallas Cowboys were number one. They created 33 turnovers in 2022. That would mean the Saints are going to go from 14 turnovers to about 35. The turnover train slash fountain is going to flow, Kevin, and our long national nightmare of the Saints not being able to create, create turnovers, being as Saints Twitter likes to call them, the no-catching motherfuckers. All that's going to change, and it's going to be a flood of turnovers for the Saints defense in 2023. What do I have to base this on? Absolutely nothing. I can tell you it's pass rush. I can tell you they're going to be healthy. I don't, I'm not going to say any of that. I'm just telling you, turnovers are fluke things. It fluctuates from year to year. It has no rhyme or reason. You can't predict the consistency of it at all. But the Saints are going to lead the league in turnovers. It's, we're, we're, due, we're due for one of those fun years where the Honey Badger and Cam Jordan and Demario Davis and Werner are getting picks and picking up fumbles. We're due. It's going to happen. Man, this, I mean, it would be a hell of a bounce back year for the it Saints. It would be. <laughs> I mean, so in 2021, the team had 25 turnovers. 
which would put them, let's see, third, fifth, uh, seventh, eighth, which would put them 10th in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm, I'm only counting the, uh, the Dennis Allen uh, years here. So, you know, they go from 10th to what are they? What were they? 30? No, they were. I'm um, shoot. And of course, it say, resets my my chart. I want to say they were 30th. 31. They were 30th. 30th. So you're saying they're going to go from 30th to first to first in number of turn. Listen, I mean, that's. That's uh, more balls than brains, Ralph. I mean, I, hey, we w the thing is, when we, when we thought of this exercise, Kevin, the thing is that I wanted to do is I, I for, the, for the hot take, I wanted it to be borderline ridiculous. Because if it's not ridiculous, then it's not spicy. Like your Jimmy Graham comeback player of the year, when we dove into it, it it's it's kind of crazy. Listen, I can talk. Listen, I can talk just about anything in the door. I can talk it in the door. <laughs> I can talk it in the like, door. I can get a first date. You know, I can but do it's that. Progressing it along is the. It's just the it's you know it's getting past date one. That's the problem. Yes. I, I can know. make you look. I can make you believe that that some of the I can make you believe some of these takes are good. I mean, I'm not listen. But here's the thing: they're not supposed to be good. They're supposed to be hot. I can make you, but I can hot. make you believe in a hot take. I can make you believe in a spicy take. I'm not, here. I'm not just saying this. Uh, like I'm not. Pulling a Skip Bayless or a Stephen A. Smith. I'm not just yeah. bullshitting for the sake of bullshitting. I'm saying I can see how that's possible. I, here's the thing for the Saints, for the, for the turnovers, for them to create turnovers, I really believe. Their defensive line, which last year, let's be realistic, it was pretty terrible, as Dave would say. Pretty bad. And... They've added a bunch of new guys. Brissy, Saunders, who looks great. Peyton Turner, he's been on the team, but he's been injured. He's been looking better at training camp, right? Uh, Carl Granderson maybe has a breakout year. I believe their defensive line last year was so bad that if they just get to average, Kevin, if they just get to Average defensive line, like in the 12 to 16 range, when you put their secondary and Dennis Allen's ability to scheme and coordinate a defense, when you put those two things together, that's going to be the turnover explosion. That's my bet. The defensive line is going to go from sad to average. That is my key for my scorching hot take of the Saints leading the NFL in turnovers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so guys i hope you like this podcast thomas thomas you can cut this one up we got we got hot takes that you can clip and we can dominate the saints youtube channel we can dominate twitter we can dominate the social media with these scorching melting right. hot takes you can split it in two split it in two and 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 and, and cut up the bites and make it we can we can own saints twitter with these hot takes so guys Thanks for joining us. If you find us on YouTube, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Go to saintshappyhour.com. Become a patron. Uh, we're the best Saints podcast going. You get more content. You get all our content commercial free. It's amazing. You should do it. So thanks to Kevin for hanging out with us. Thanks for Thomas, as always, running the show back in Poland. He does amazing work. He got my camera working. He got my audio sounding normal. Uh, and... The support of patrons allows us to do that. So for Kevin, for Thomas, I'm Ralph. Until next time, the Damn. bar is closed. Answer that phone. <laughs> <laughs>